thankful that God would touch people's hearts in that way. So all that hard work that goes into all that risk assessments, all that uh, the, you know, paperwork that we have to do uh, by law, which is very frustrating. People are getting saved uh, in that. And we, church, are a part of that. Whether you've been to serve and revive or not, you've given generously over the last few years, and I'm so thankful uh, that, uh, that you've done that, uh, and we're seeing the fruit from it, and fruit that remains. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. It's worth getting excited about, isn't it? I, I, certainly, I certainly was. Um, and I know that they are uh, uh, more excited than that hand clap that we, we gave, which is wonderful also. Um, listen, it's my joy to uh, uh, invite uh, Dennis and Holly to come and just share for uh, a few minutes of who they are and what they do with our... Yeah, can he be their microphone? That's fine. Uh, you can stand up here with us, come in, uh, up in the stage, guys, and I want you to be able to introduce yourselves. So you heard this morning that they're from Norman, Oklahoma, from uh, Antioch, uh, in, in Norman, and they attended the same church as Carol, and it would seem that she set the, the pioneer uh, rhythm for that, and now they've come to stay, which is amazing. <laughs> Did you guys know that yet? No, you didn't. Partly, partly. Uh, but they are, they're clapping like, is this true? No, it's, <laughs> great, we'll receive them. But these guys uh, serve, have served for many years, um, and maybe you'll just share a little bit about your missionary um, areas as well, uh, but have served so faithfully for many years uh, in uh, many areas of ministry, uh, but now they have the capacity of uh, pastoral oversight for the Antioch movement for Europe. What does that mean? It means that uh, people like uh, myself and Roxanne uh, and Carol uh, have these guys come and just check in us. They're not checking to see if we're going to need to get the sack or not. That's, <laughs> that's not their remit, which they're very thankful for. But they are a great blessing. We had a wonderful time of uh, a prayer with them last night. And, you know, they were refreshed and we were very, very refreshed. And we're just so thankful for them to be here in Banff with us once again. Amen. Let's, let, let's uh, clap for them and... And stand for them as well.
Amen. Well, we are thrilled to have you both with us and uh, make sure that you get a chance to chat to them uh, before you leave today. Uh, you'll be blessed and so will they to get to know you. You'll, be have, you'll have new friends other than just not only Carol, should I say, um, but also others from uh, Oklahoma and not Texas. I mean, uh, that was... That was something, Paul. That was something. That's right. Uh, uh, it's funny. There's a lot of wars between the, in the football realm of uh, between Oklahoma and, and Texas. Um, Listen, in the start of January, I brought a word uh, about low-hanging fruit, which I might touch on a little bit this morning, um, uh, if, we, if we get the chance to do that. Um, but also, I spoke about three points uh, to uh, the end of which we have had in the past, love God, love others, change the world. And I brought to you um, about his presence and his power and his purpose, his presence which softens and secures our heart, his power which expands and excites our heart, and his purpose, which changes our heart. As we get a grasp of his purpose for us and our lives, we see a picture of the world there that we realize that it is about what God is doing in Banff, but not only Banff, but in many other areas of the world, and some of which are represented here today. We heard it being shouted out all the way from Brazil through Mabel uh, in worship this morning. Come on. Uh, and we're allowing God to stir our hearts in excitement in worship, which is very, very important church to worship God with everything that God has given us not just our voice but our bodies and every uh, not just our toes but our hips and every other thing that God might want to use as we worship him because he made us in his image male and female he created us and uh, uh, I, I am just uh, so thankful that in the midst of us focusing on his presence and his power and his purpose, that God would re reveal to us afresh the things that he wants us to do in this time. If you would turn with me to Matthew chapter 19, I want to read uh, a few verses from verse 16, and then after that I'll give you the title of my message. Uh, Matthew chapter 19. This story is in three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, but I'm reading from uh, Matthew's Gospel this morning, verse 16 of chapter 19 in Matthew's Gospel. Say amen if you're there. Amen. Say amen if you're there because it's on the screen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. It says in, 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 in uh, verse 60, reading from the ESV, And behold, a man came to him. And behold, I'm trying to get your attention. And behold, something's about to be said that's very important for you to listen to. And behold, turn to the person next to you and say, Behold. Behold, God wants to tell you something, church, this morning. So behold, a man came to him uh, uh, saying, Teacher. What good deed must I do to have eternal life? And he said to him, why do you ask, this is Jesus, why do you ask me about what is good? There is only one who is good. If you would enter life, keep the commandments. He said to him, which ones? And Jesus said, you shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother. And then he fast forwards through some of the other uh, commandments and says, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, all these things I have kept, what do I still lack? And Jesus said to him, if you would be perfect, go. Sell what you possess and give to the poor. Go, sell, and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come follow me. When the young man heard this, uh, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. And Jesus said to his disciples, truly I say to you, only with difficulty will a rich person enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, 
they were greatly astonishing. Who then can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said, With man, this is impossible. But with God, but with God, all things are possible. All things are possible. Uh, if, if only you caught that, church, this morning, what the Bible is teaching there, you might just lay your Bible down and stand up and do a little twirl because all things are possible in God. Okay, maybe it's just me that's excited about that this morning. Don't worry about it. It's fine. It's fine. All things are possible. All things. Oh, get free this morning. Isn't that amazing to get free? Get free from yourself. I have to get free from myself sometimes as well. So this morning I want to speak about his purpose. His purpose. And if you want a subheading, earthly position, eternal purpose. Earthly position, eternal purpose. Of course, our earthly position should align with our eternal, eternal purpose. The area that God has placed us should always be unto Jesus. Amen? Amen. So whether you're uh, at school, unto Jesus. Whether that you're at work, unto Jesus. A missionary, hopefully unto Jesus. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. <laughs> Not for ourselves, but unto Jesus. Sometimes this can be a challenge. Because life brings challenges. Uh, our brother uh, said that as he was sharing about their time in China, which we now know, well, I'd, I've forgotten already, but my boys know how to say ice cream in Chinese, which is, of course, the most important thing to say if you're in China. It means you've got three square meals a day, very sugary, but nonetheless, you know how to say the word ice cream. Sometimes challenges happen and this causes us to forget our eternal purpose in God. And of course, there's many parts to his purpose. And I could speak about Matthew 28. But of course, I've touched um, on Matthew 19 and this rich young ruler. Ultimately, Jesus is always, always, always after our heart. And everything that we do on this earth, Jesus is desperately seeking our whole heart. And he wants that for each one of us, that we would surrender, which we've sung this morning. I love the fact that I, I, I hear my, I read, uh, excuse me, I type my message, and then I hear the songs that are being sung, and I say, thank you, Jesus, because uh, of the coincidence that happens to be prophetic words, worship, and uh, the, the, the word that all align together, and no one's had a little conversation to say, this is what we need to give to the people this morning, just the Godhead. Just the Godhead come together, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and said, what do River Church Banff need this morning? Let's give them that. A portal that's opened over the people of God in Banff to see that light shining up and down, which we've had prophesied over this church for years, that a portal of favor would open up over this church. And let me tell you, I don't know about you, but I have received that favor. I'm so desperate to share a testimony that God is working through in our lives just now, but I'm not going to do it today. But let me tell you that there's favor there for the taking because God is present and where he's present, if you submit your heart, you can receive the favor of God as the people of God to do the things for God. His purpose in Banff, amen? I think uh, as, I, as I reflect on this rich young ruler, which if you say fast is quite difficult, uh, rich young ruler, uh, I, I think about questions that he asked. I think about questions that I've asked of God over the years. Has anyone asked God a question over the years? Anyone been frustrated with a situation that's going on and you're saying, but God, why? Has, has anybody done that? Yeah, I, I've done that a few times in my life. I've maybe then went on as far to say um, uh, that God, you know, well, uh, uh, in the last 14 years, I've asked God a lot of challenging questions, what I thought were challenging, and he said, it's okay to ask. Amen. And we can have a sliding scale of questions uh, being asked. Everything from, Lord, would you keep that parking space for me when I go to Tesco? Or... Strachan's or you know, whatever the place is, you know, Delight or you know, I'm thinking, sorry, I shouldn't have said any names. <laughs> and every other good business that the people of this wonderful church have. <laughs> Would you keep that parking space for me? 
Would you get that car that's in front of me to turn off because it's going so slow? <laughs> or would you give me an upgrade on my plane uh, ticket because it's a 13-hour flight and I don't want to be sat in that economy of small seats? Everything from that part of the sliding scale, everything to, God, why did you take them from me? Why have I been praying for years and I'm still not seeing the healing that I'm desperate to see? And we've got this big sliding scale of questions that we ask God and God is saying, keep on asking me. Because the Bible says, we have not because we ask not. And one of the signs of a great Christian is perseverance. I don't know why I've not got it yet, but I'm not going to stop asking. I'm going to keep on asking until the Lord tells me to stop. And I think about the, you know, the, the death and the difficulty that we face in that. Uh, and I think about Colin Murray, who um, has uh, just passed away last week, a, a pastor in the next town along the road in, in Port Soy. Um, and and uh, his funeral will be uh, to, uh, on Sunday tomorrow at 11 a.m. at uh, Port Soy Parish Church. I would suggest you get there early to get a seat if you want one, because uh, I'd imagine it'd be a busy service. Colin was a friend of this church. Uh, and many members of this church would go and support Colin weekly um, at the services there uh, in an evening. Uh, I enjoyed many a good time with Colin uh, over the years and uh, normally surrounded by food. Uh, it's normally how a good uh, fellowship happens um, and uh, just so thankful that his fight with that sickness is now at an end. Um, we pray for healing and whether it's on earth or it's in uh, heaven, he's now received that full reward and is completely free of any uh, wheelchair that's tried to bind him. Um, so we're thankful for his life um, and we'll, we'll give thanks for that tomorrow in the service. Please do come along to that uh, with us. I think about other people that have also uh, passed away in this congregation that we have contended for. Lord, would you keep them? Many people in the last few years that we've said, Lord, would you keep them? Would you heal them? And in our minds, we don't understand why they're gone, but Lord, we thank you that your purpose, your purpose is always fulfilled. It's always fulfilled. Always. Say the word always. always. So the questions that we ask Jesus, if he were in the flesh right here, right now, what question would you ask him? Okay, let me fast forward because if he was here right, here right now and he showed up in person, in the flesh, I think we'd probably all be in our faces for many hours singing holy, 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 amen? And then after many days and many hours, we might, a little question pops in, uh, maybe a theological question that you're just struggling with in the Bible <laughs> that pops into your mind. Yeah, you know, all that disappears. But if he was here in the room, and in your earthly mind just now, what would you ask him? See, in this story, a, a serious and wealthy young man comes to Jesus and asks a life or death question. How can I be saved? How can I have the good version of the afterlife and not the bad one, right? How can I enter heaven? It's a real place, church, amen? Heaven is a real place, and so is hell. Hell is a very real place, as well. And when I was uh, 24 and bound for a hell, as I hit 25, God intervenes in my life and takes me and transports me from the kingdom of darkness and into the kingdom of light. And this is what this young man is asking, because I was asking the same questions. How can I be saved? What do I need to do to be saved? Let me say, this is the most important question. Every other question comes after that. This is the number one question. How can I be saved? What do I have to do to be saved? Every other question is secondary after that one. This is eternity that this man is speaking about. So this morning, I have three points for you, and I will fly through them for the most part. Um, and I'll slow down for the really important parts. Um, <laughs> And that three questions, uh, that three points are three questions for you today. They are not grammatically correct, okay? Before they go, are they on the screen? Not yet. Okay, before they go on the screen, Lord, help my heart. Okay? That's your deal with God. I'm okay with that. Okay, question number one. 
You can put on the screen for me, Jerry. Who or what is your identity tied to? You see, growing up as a, as a baby, I was Isabel and Robert's son and Louise and Ross's brother. As I grew up and went into work, the workplace, uh, well, I was a kid that attended one school. I was a Paul's student at one point. Um, I was a waiter in, in, in hotels. I was a policeman. I was an insurance salesman. I was a whiskey maker and a pastor. Oh, and I'm also one of those happy, clappy people that go to that church. <laughs> Amen. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I've been known as a few things over the years, and some of them, I don't know that you've maybe said, or other people have said, that I'm happy not to know what I've been called uh, in the past. Now listen, I've been a policeman, so I know all the different words that have been called them before. Nothing surprises me. Isn't it interesting that there is an assault on our earthly identity? Who am I? What am I? Do you know there's, there's now be, uh, uh, many, uh, is it 1,000, 2,000 different uh, 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 things you can call yourself, you can be whatever you want, with whoever you want, whenever you want, however you want. But if we go back to Scripture in the book of Genesis, we see that God has created us male and female. But when we throw doubt into that area and we cast confusion over it, we now have thousands of different identities that we can, we can call ourselves. And we spend our lives figuring out, who am I? When Jesus says, I know who you are. I made you. I knit you together in your mother's womb. I know who you are. I know what I've called you to be. And here we have the identity of this young man, rich, young, ruler. Rich, young, ruler. I've been one of those three. <laughs> like, notice I said I have been one of those three. Not rich and not a ruler. And I was young once. And my kids point out the gray hairs on my head, which is very frustrating. In other words, you know, you might say it this way, uh, that he was identified in the scripture as what his role was known as. He was a, a young ruler. You know, he was that guy from the fancy houses over by Kalenard, you know, where all the fancy people live in the, the nice houses, not on Duncan Street. No way they would be staying there. He's a, a rich young ruler in the fancy house. But he was identified with his earthly possessions, not his eternal purpose. But sometimes we like the, the identity, we like that applause uh, for the things that we're doing. And you know, stewarded, if it's not stewarded properly, position creates power and can lead to very difficult places in our heart. And Joe cautioned us in the past, he says, listen, when we give titles, we can become um, do you remember it? No? Okay, that's okay. When we get titles, we become entitled. And we've got to be careful of that because we don't want to live in that place. And Paul was very clear that a leader in the church is actually serves more than anyone else. Because how does a, a leader serve? It's from this place, right? It's not from this place looking down on a person. It's how can we help to support others? Amen. If our title points back to us, we have a problem. Our title should point to the truth, and the truth in Jesus. So whatever we do, wherever we are, whatever, whatever uh, identity, earthly uh, position you have, unto Jesus, unto Jesus. I'm a teacher, unto Jesus. I'm a pastor, unto Jesus. I work in a pharmacy, I'm a, I'm a, a, a cafe uh, owner, unto Jesus. Everything unto Jesus. Your will be done. Amen. And I think uh, a, a, a role name actually does bring a little bit of clarity, you know, uh, two things. Um, I, I think about the labels that we have attached and uh, I see it this way. So my label as a pastor should always loop. It loops back to Jesus, right? So my label, pastor, loops back to Jesus. And then I point people back to Jesus. And pastor points back to Jesus. 
And as a, as a teacher, uh, which Paul clearly is, he taught his way through ser- leading the service this morning, uh, a teacher, he points back to Jesus. Here's a scripture for you, point back to Jesus. What area of your life is not looping back to Jesus? What area of your life stops with you and doesn't glorify God? And there's some places in my heart, listen, this, this message is more for me than it is for you. There's some areas of my life that I know that things have stopped with me and I've really enjoyed that. I've really enjoyed that feeling of being recognized or uh, worldly uh, affirmation. And I say, God, I, I give it back to you. I give it back to you. Thank you, Lord. So what things do we need to unload? What things are on us identity-wise that are not of God? It says in that scripture that, that it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a teensy weensy needle, actually not. You see, interestingly, in Jerusalem, uh, there was a, 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 the, the entryway into Jerusalem was narrow. And what had to happen is that, uh, for our American friends, it's narrow. Okay, if you're wondering what the word is, we, uh, it's very difficult to understand. I'm just helping you a little bit. Um, uh, uh, it was difficult for camels to get into that, the entryway into Jerusalem. So what they had to do is... Uh, take all the stuff off of them so they were obviously carrying possessions they were carrying people the people had to come off as did all the stuff that was hanging over the sides of the camel to get the camel into Jerusalem and this word and this uh, this meaning that Jesus says to his disciples is suggesting actually that this man couldn't let go of his stuff to get into the kingdom of God He was trying to tell him, listen, to unburden yourself. And this is us as a church, unburden yourself with the things of the world. Let go of those things of the world and be released from it and receive the freedom of God in your mind. You you understand the, the pressures that we feel in our minds sometimes that we just need to release from us. To enter in to the kingdom of God, the eternal purpose that God has for us. Amen. Amen. What things do you need to unload to make your heart clear? It says in Matthew 18 verses 18 to 20, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. We have to be free from those things that aren't connecting us to Jesus. Amen. I'm telling you, I've watched some rubbish in my life. Um, I have, I've watched it, uh, you know, I've, I've listened to uh, rubbish and it's normally the news, you know, that, you know, you, you switch on and, um, you know, you just get, you get consumed with all this stuff um, and the Lord's saying, get free from it, get free from it. That's Matthew, uh, Matthew 18 verses 18 to 20, 18 to 20, remember that number, say 18 to 20. That's the prayer and fast time this month, 18 to 20. Um, and that's the scripture that we're going to be sticking to for those three days. 72 hours of prayer and worship. Three days. Please come and be a part of it. Sign up at the back. There's a sign up sheet. What is your identity tied to? Who is your identity tied to? What's mine? I'm a son of the king. Amen, Rob. I'm the righteousness of Christ. Amen. I'm the hope of the world. I'm the light of the world because Jesus lives in me, works through me. I'm redeemed. I'm set free. I'm cleansed by the blood. That's who I am. And I'm tied to Jesus. Tied to Jesus. So what things do we need to cut off from our lives that are trying to pull us back and keep us away from the things that God has for us? The next one for you is who and what is your faith in? Of course, Robert, I know the answer to this one. It's Jesus. Amen? Okay, there were six people that agreed that our faith should be tied to Jesus. Um, River Church, our faith should be tied to Jesus. Thank you. Always the way for us is our faith should be tied uh, to Jesus. That's a simple thing to say, right? But here we have the rich young ruler who comes to Jesus with his preconception of what he needs to have to be saved because Jesus meets him where he's at. Does Jesus know everything? Good. So he maybe knows what the man's thinking, right? Well, he keeps the commandments. I'm a rich young ruler. Of course I keep the commandments. So he, he, he gets his list, check. I haven't killed anyone. 
I haven't murdered anyone. I haven't, I haven't committed adultery. I haven't stolen anything. I haven't blasphemed my parents. I haven't said anything bad about my parents. I haven't, I haven't said anything bad about other people. I've kept that list. The first thing this uh, rich young ruler does is he comes and he says, teacher or rabbi. So he recognized Jesus and he recognized him as someone that was about to give a meaningful answer to his questions. He didn't like the answer. Have you ever asked Jesus a question and you didn't like the answer? Me too. Me too. But the second thing that this man thought was that he assumed that having eternal life comes through his actions. If I do, then I'll get. If I do this, then I'll get this. And how often, think back to your childhood. How much did you want your attention from your parents growing up? If I do this thing, then I'll get that affirmation from mom or dad. And I understand it. I get. But listen, Jesus has done it all. Amen. He's done it all. I've got an amen at the back of the church from a little daisy this morning. Praise the Lord. Father, heal that young girl in Jesus' name. He asked Jesus, what good thing must I have uh, to uh, do to have eternal life? And this phrase, eternal life, is the first time we see it in Matthew's gospel in the New Testament. You know, interestingly, some people believe that if they did good, they got eternal life. In those days, that's what they thought. If I do this good thing, then I'll get eternal life. I've spoke to so many people in the past, even throughout the evangelism that we've been doing, and they'll say to me, but I'm a good person. Being good doesn't meet the the standard, amen? It's the confession of our faith in the Lord Jesus that does that. So the next time you hear someone say, but I'm a good person, say, listen, it doesn't go on our own merit because what is your, your level of good? What does that mean? Well, I've kept the commandments. Not enough. It's not enough. How many churchgoers are still asking that same question? People attending church. It's one thing for people outside the church to be asking, what must I do to be saved? Luke, could you bring those, Luke, could you bring those two boxes up on the stage for me? Thank you, Paul. Um, just put them up here. Looking cool, isn't he? <laughs> Give us a bow, Luke. Thank you very much. There we are. Thank you, Luke. Well done. <laughs> In fact, we'll put one over here. He's a champ. He and Kobe are on a, a, a radio show every, well, once a month on a Friday. You should listen to it. It's very funny. Um, uh, uh, what must I do to be saved, this man asks. But it's not about lists. It's about love. It's not about a list of doing things. It's about the love of God for us. Amen. So... I've got two boxes here, um, and I, I was thinking about this uh, yesterday, and I was thinking, okay, Lord, if I put all of my decisions in my week into do two different boxes, what would be the most full? And I've got, you want to come up, Roxanne, and write the word for me? She asked me, is there any big words? So if you write supercalifragilisticexpialidocious <laughs> on this one, now if you write faith on there for me. So it's a faith box, and... Uh, no, 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 you're absolutely fine. I was going to write it myself, but apparently I've not got as good. Thank you. And in, in my, my faith box, I've got all of these, these things that I've been asking God, and I've said, right, God, I'm going to put it into the faith box because I'm going to believe you. But over here, and this isn't the, uh, like, I'm going to call it doubt. Uh, should I call it doubt? <laughs> Unbelief. And doubt. Yeah, yeah, unbelief, doubt, uncertainty. Three, three things there. Just checking that she's good at spelling. Unbelief. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's good. And in this box, I've got questions that I've asked God, and I've thought, I just don't think that I've got the uh, certainty. No, no, certainty. What? Yeah. Certainty? Yeah. I tell you, you guys are going to... Oh, that's good. You're like, wait a second, why? Well, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, but you know the word. 
See, the thing is, if we are certain about everything, then we don't need faith. You don't need faith. I'm certain, and I don't need faith. So uh, uh, we have that challenge in our minds that we, we can get rid of this box because I'm certain I don't need faith. Well, it's faith that pleases God. So we need faith. So in life, the reason I was cautious about writing the word doubt because you can still have doubt but still have faith, right? So I can doubt things, but God, I'm leaning into faith rather than over here. And I was thinking about it this week, and I'm just wondering, you know, rather than having my lists and all of these things, if I just come to God by faith and trust Him, that's not about my good works and the things that I'll do right to get me to heaven. It's about my faith in Jesus. So what are some questions that we might ask the Lord preset questions? I'm just not... That's a list and a half. Who wrote that one? That's amazing. Uh, I'll read that one in a minute. Give me something nice. And, uh, choosing uh, to sing in front of thousands. Uh, God, you might have said it, but I don't know, I don't know if I can believe that. Yeah. That I can do it, number one, and that thousands might gather to worship together. Which box, which box can I put that in? Can I trust God and put it in the box of faith? Say, God, I believe that. Okay, that's a very specific one there. What about uh, this one here? There was a need for an orphanage home. There is no obvious means. I walked in faith and prophesied that it will be sorted out before the need ends. Someone just dropped the needed amount into the the, uh, uh, orphanage's account. Faith. How do we believe God? That's a lot of money. Looking at our bank account. Looking at our bank account. Now, God, you've asked us to do stuff, but we don't have the money for it. I'll, I'll, I don't have the money for it. I don't have the faith for it, so I'll put it into the doubt box. And I know, that, listen, I know you guys give the right answers. I know what you need to say. I know this. But the, the thing is, is that sometimes in our week when we're not together gathered as a body, we sometimes are challenged with these thoughts. What well, am I going to live by faith or am I going to live by unbelief? Yeah, am I going to live by that unbelief? Or am I going to trust God at his word? But God, I, didn't, I don't know if it was actually you. Is it good? Yeah. Is it going to glorify God? I'm going to carry the faith box. And I just wonder in our week what it would be like for us to, f- to fill the faith box and kick the unbelief box out of the way. I'm not dealing with that unbelief. I believe God is real. I believe he's true to his word. And that's what I'm going to live by. So next week when I come to church, my box of faith is full. It's full of faith. Listen, what does that do to us? I'm not speaking about what it does to the town. I'm speaking about what it does to you in this church. God grows your faith. Listen, I didn't believe that God could heal someone from getting out of a wheelchair until I saw it with my own eyes. And I heard the testimony of someone who for two years didn't get out of a wheelchair because they couldn't walk. And then I saw that person not only getting up, but getting up and dancing. Listen, that's a faith story. That's a faith story. Do you know that Powerless Christianity is not New Testament Christianity. The power of God lives in us. And he's desperate for you to let it out to those that are around you. One of the questions that was asked, uh, that someone wrote was, uh, you've asked me to speak to my neighbor, but I don't know if I should. Is that God? It's the Lord, amen? It's the Lord. Should I share the gospel with a person? How much do you want me to give, Lord? Really? Is that God? No way. You want me to give more than I'm already given? Surely that's the devil. (laughs) That's not the Lord. You see, in this portion of scripture, what we see is Jesus met this man where he was at. Keep the commandments. The man says, I'm keeping them. And Jesus ramped up this challenge to the man and says, okay, you're doing that. Here's another one for you. Go, sell, and give. Go, sell, and give. Would you go and sell all your possessions? And we sung it this morning, I surrender. 
I surrender, and then you say, but I go home, and I don't surrender because there's so many things I quite like to do. And that's why uh, our fasting times are so important, because it reminds us what we're doing this life for, unto Jesus. Unto Jesus. What does Banff look like with our faith box full? Faith box full. I'm thinking about the story about the, um, the spies that were sent out by Moses into the land and they go and they see this land flowing with what? Milk and honey. Lactose intolerant. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a land flowing with milk and honey, right? And they go back and uh, all but two share the same report. Beautiful. Here's some of the fruit to taste. But we can't go there. What do they say? They say this, they say, the people are very powerful, the big cities, they're fortified and they're very large. They're very large. They've been in a lot of that honey. The same uh, group of people, two of them said that stuff's true. They said it's all true what they've said, but surely God will be with us. Surely. God will be with us. We'll go by faith. But no, not only that, you see, the thing is, is that they recall the promise that God had spoken to Moses. I'm going to give you the land. So you've got Joshua and Caleb that remember the promise that was given. And they said, well, surely if God said it, he's going to do it. Right. He's going to do it. So here we are, a people of faith. And my Bible says, with God, all things. All things? All things. Really? All things. All things are possible. No matter what age you are, no matter what life stage you're at, no matter what's going on in your life, all things. Say all things. Oh, if only we had that faith. If only I would daily walk out, Lord, and all things is possible with you, with God. With man, impossible. With God, all things. Amen? Amen. Last point. Who or what are you listening to? Who or what are you listening to? So many voices around us, church. It's getting louder and louder. Who do we listen to? What do we listen to? Do we listen to the government? Are they, are they telling us the truth? Is that all right? And listen, I'm not um, casting doubt on, on a government. You can do that in your own time. Um, but there's influencers, there's TikTokers, there's YouTubers. Do we listen to them? Have they got the truth? Do they, do they know what it is? Listen, can I just implore you to listen to Jesus? Yes. But not just listen to Jesus, but listen to Jesus because he's maybe speaking more than just a couple of words to us and wants to tell us way more than, than we've maybe uh, listened to uh, in the past. Listen to him. I, I, the reason that I say this is because uh, Jesus says to the, 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 the man, he says, sell everything, uh, all, all that you possess and give it to the poor and you'll have treasure in heaven. But I know that the man didn't fully listen. Now, for the men in the room, here's the challenge for you. Uh, there's something called active listening. What it means is you don't listen to part of what someone says and then switch off to that whilst they're still talking and then think about your response. Amen? Any guys want to nod their head and be honest? Because it happens. It's what, certainly what I do, for sure. They've said something. And something that they've maybe said has provoked me to think, I'm ready with my answer. I don't know what else you're going to say, but I'm ready for it. I wonder if this is what happened to this man. He'd heard the, the, the provoking statement that God had made, or Jesus had made, and said, sell everything and, and, and give it to the poor. Oh, I just can't do that. And he missed the most important part. He missed it. Jesus says, and come and follow me. He missed it. He had so much possession and so much things that were in, in and around him that he missed the most important part of all of this is come and follow me. Come and follow me. Jesus set a very high bar. And how do we know that he missed it? Verse 22. 
Jesus says, come and follow me. And then immediately the man did this. When the young man heard this, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. He got stuck on the possessions. He got stuck on the possessions. How many times? Got all this stuff round about you. It's worthless. It's worthless. Jesus is all that we need. Amen? Jesus is all that we need. Uh, now, I've missed some stuff in the past because I've been thinking about a response. And it challenged me this morning, Lord, I'm not just going to wait for uh, you to say something and I'm going to respond. I'm going to be waiting and waiting to make sure I hear the whole thing. Trust and obey. Trust and obey. Come. Not with your preset questions or your single focused ways. Come and give your fear to Jesus and he'll release his eternal purpose on your life. Why is this word significant? Why is this significant, church? Well, it was a young man. But why was that significant? Because of the scripture that came before. What was the scripture before? Jesus said, let the little children come to me. See, man-made uh, uh, structures put in this thing to stop the little children uh, coming to Jesus. No, don't you disturb. Come up here, Paul. Come on. He's been waiting for this moment for weeks. Come on. Hi. Hi. Do you love Jesus? Yeah. That's a good answer. I'm glad you said that today. Sometimes you just don't know what day it is, you know. You're just wondering <laughs> what's happening. And Jesus would say, to us, let the little children come. Not just loving Jesus at this age. I love when Paul leads because he reminds me of someone who, well, it's like, in my mind, it's like a kid caught in a sweetie shop. When you're in the presence of God, you just get so excited for the things of God's at work. And that, I love that because that's how Jesus calls us to be. Like little children in his presence, everything's open to happen. Anything can happen in his presence. Could you imagine the power of the Holy Spirit touching uh, this young man's life? Amen. To have such an impact on the world around him? Because he just said, I heard my uncle say that with God all things are possible. I know that's in the Bible and I'm going to believe it. Amen? Amen. Smile. He's happy. No, show us your teeth. There we go. <laughs> Give him a big clap. <laughs> All things are possible, but this was a young ruler. It was the next stage of life up. What's, the God, what's God saying to the next age of life, to the youth of this generation? Come. Look, the Lord says to you, come to him. Keep coming to the Lord. Listen, in your youth, there'll be so many things that get thrown at you that'll try and distract you and say, this is much tastier than the presence of God, but keep coming to the Lord. Keep serving the Lord in these days. It's so important, no matter what age you're at. If you're in your 20s, what's the Lord saying? Come. If you're in your 30s, what's the Lord saying? Come. 40s? Come. 50s? Come. Keep coming to Jesus. There's your word for today, church. Keep coming to Jesus. It's so important that we never turn our backs on him, but follow him at every point in our lives. Look, the Lord is saying to you, keep coming to me. Yeah. Even with your sunglasses on, keep coming to me. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yeah. yes. The amazing thing is that God has created each one of us differently yeah. with different things in our life, and yeah. we're all called to be different. Why? Because you're unique. And the world needs a unique person to reach another unique person. Yes. Come. Come. Unworthy, downcast, come. And then the Lord says this, follow me. Would you stand with me? The Lord wants to speak to you this morning. We'll have people here to pray for you. Uh, the Lord would speak to you this morning about your purpose in Him. Yes. Your earthly position, your eternal purpose. This young man committed suicide the day that he turned his back on Jesus. Wow. He denied Christ. And listen, 
for us in this room, it's amazing to come into his presence and to be ministered to of the Lord in this way. There's a purpose for it. To, to empower you to go into all the world. Amen? Amen. Yes. This young ruler missed it because of possessions. It might not be possessions for you. It might be many other things. I remember in 2000, and I think it was about 18 or 19, I was in America. I was actually in Oklahoma at the time. And I met this evangelist, a well-known evangelist in America, um, and uh, doing incredible things there. And I got to have the chance to have lunch, and after lunch I was nervous. I wanted to ask him this question, but I, like, I don't know about you, but I hold, I know that I'm going to be with him for a while, so I hold the important question right to the last minute, because I'm scared in case I get the wrong answer. Um, um, and in that, I said, you need to come to Scotland. The Lord needs people like you to come to Scotland and evangelize in our nation. And that person really frustrated me. Because they said this, they said, I believe God has called me to America, not Scotland. I'm like, how dare you? Scotland needs evangelism. And the Lord was so quick to say to me, I haven't called him, I've called you. Yes. And see, the thing is for us is that he's not calling the person next to you to do the things that he's called you to do. He's called you to do them. And we pray, Lord, would you do it? He's saying yes through you. Through you and through your life and whatever sphere of influence you have, the Lord has called you. Don't look to the person to your left. Don't look to the person to your right. But look unto Jesus who says, come to me and follow me. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So Father, in these moments, I would pray your presence would be manifest. Your power would be seen at work and your purpose Lord your purpose his purpose would be revealed to us if you would open your hands out like we did during the, the worship service if you're not used to doing that just go with me just like you're getting a gift if we could all do that just open your hands out and if you don't know what your purpose is even though you're thinking maybe it's changing maybe you want to ask the Lord, what do you want me to do? What is my purpose in this next season of life? Oh, I get excited about this church. This is what drives me in the things that God has called me to do. Could you imagine a people so abandoned, so focused on his purpose, our eternal purpose, that we would see our lives changed and the people around us change just by a single yes. By a simple yes. I remember Joe years ago said, he took communion and we're going to take communion next Sunday, but he took communion. He says, if you can do anything with this life, I give it to you. That's a bold prayer. Maybe you want to pray something like that this morning. Lord, if you can do anything, with this life. It's yours. It's yours. It's yours. Father, I want to see my faith box filled. I want to hear you and what you have to say to me. I want to listen and keep on listening. I want my identity and my faith to be so bound to you. I don't want to have faith in a person, Lord. I want to have faith, full faith in you. I don't want to have faith in a structure. I want to have faith in you. Yes. Christ is enough. Church, Christ is enough. Christ is enough. We're going to sing that chorus just now. Let's sing that chorus. Christ is enough for me. Christ is enough. Christ is 
enough for me. Christ is enough for me. Everything I need is in you. Everything I need. If our, uh, if our leadership team could come uh, forward, uh, Holy and Dennis, you guys come forward, and we're going to pray for you this morning. Uh, you guys are going to pray for other people. Let me just be clear. We'll pray for you guys later, but you guys are going to pray for our congregation. So if you're part of the leadership team or uh, on the prayer team, then please come forward. We would love to pray for you. Jesus, who made the ulti- ultimate decision, with the Godhead for our destiny, that he would die on a cross for us, that he would take the keys back from hell, and that he would be resurrected three days later to release the power in us. There's maybe some things I've shared with you this morning. Church, please don't leave here without receiving prayer, faith-filled prayers that people are going to partner with you in, to believe God with you, to see God do that next thing that he's called you to do as we continue to worship. Again, please stay in fellowship with us after this as well. We'd love to uh, stay and talk with you after this service. Amen. So come, church. Come and receive prayer. Come and respond to the word of God this morning. Again, don't wait for the person to your left or to your right. Just focus on Jesus and Come and receive that partnership in prayer this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Come and receive that ministry. Come and receive fresh hope and fresh love for your life. Strength to keep on moving as the Lord is leading. In Jesus' name. Amen.